Hi, Carol here. I hope you have a cup of tea and a goodie because this is a long tutorial. I want to start out with it's a seven and a half by seven and a half inch card, but with the lace extensions on it, it turns out to be an eight by eight and a half inch card. Okay, so here I'm just, I want to use a punch by Martha Stewart, you know, the, the dainty, delicate uh, lace one. You'll see it probably in the tutorial later on. But I wanted to add this to the two sides and have a half inch gusset. So the reason why I'm doing this way, I can cut the two panels, add this panel to that to the two panels, one on each side, and get a nice look on each side of having uh, like a doily cut, uh, punched out look, and get my half inch um, gusset. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's uh, I'm fighting a sore throat, so please forgive me if I'm having to clear my throat now and again. There it is. I tried to do it with a heavier. Yes, make sure you test your paper if you're using a punch for the thickness ahead of time. Get a scrap piece of paper because I'm telling you, if I was to ruin that paper that I already scored, put my gusset in, the right measurements, and I lost my mind. So yes, I learned that by experience to grab a piece of paper and see whether the thickness is too thick to go through your punches. All punches aren't the same, you know. Yeah, I learned that too. So here we go, look at that beautiful doily end. I'm going to put one on each end of this uh, little add-on to my cards. Oh, excuse me, I'm cutting. Oh, he could have got his tail cut, couldn't he? He always comes when I'm using stickies or I'm cutting. Now, so much has been going on. Let me right off the bat say that last night I ordered that new switch Big Shot Machine, the electric one, and I was informed today that they're not coming out until July or August. Is that sad or what? I paid for it and everything. And they just heard from Sizzix that the new Switch is not coming out until later in the summer. And, oh, I was so disappointed. I wanted to do a video on it. I love it. You don't have to touch the button. It goes through automatic and it comes back automatic. It's nine inches across. It's wonderful. So if you haven't heard of the switch, just go online. They had it at Creativation 2020 in January and I saw that video and I said I have to have that machine. So I ordered it, paid for it, and got a phone call that they can't get it in. So uh, until, you know, August. That was sad, but I'm hunting for it. I'm hunting for it. As soon as I get one, I will put a video up. Now, here is my little uh, piece that's going to go on the card. I had to add a piece to this because when I put the glue, you know, when I, if I had have done the other side of the card um, without putting this extension on the extension, it was sliding and I didn't like the look of it. So I thought, okay, I'll just add a piece of uh, lightweight paper. This is the wedding paper that I get at Michael's. You know that really nice uh, glittery looking wedding paper? I just love that. It's so slight. It has that gold in it. Really pretty. It's only 80 pounds. Works well through the Martha Stewart punches. And my 140 pound cardstock will not work. The 120 pound cardstock would not work. So I kind of gave up and went right to the 80 pound and it worked wonderfully. So how's everybody doing? Are you ordering a lot of things online? I have really tried not to. The switch was actually, excuse me, I thought I had to cough but I didn't. The, the switch big shot is the only thing I really did want. I just saw it for the first time yesterday on uh, YouTube. I had not had time to go on and search stuff because I'm trying to keep away from YouTube so I don't order anything. <laughs> you know me. I like to shop in my stash. I don't have a problem with that but I did want that machine. I was so disappointed that I couldn't get one but I'm going to try rounding one up somehow before July. 
As soon as I do, I will do a video on it. So there you go. Look at that. I have the gusset. I have my two sheets of paper, which are seven and a half by seven and a half, put on each side of this little extension sheet. It looks very nice if you're thinking about doing this. The reason why I use the Martha Stewart punch, my friends, is I'm going to be using a lot of uh, lace. Okay, now let's just see. I wanted, I was requested by a few people to do tone on tone. So I did. I did a cream tone on tone on one side of the inside. I did a white wedding tone on tone. Now, can I stop right there? Do you see this piece of lace? I am not kidding. It's plastic. It's plastic. I got it in a bag from the thrift store a couple of years ago. And I remembered I had it, but the strangest thing, it has double-sided tape on the back of it at the top. It's plastic. But on the other side, it's material. It's like they fused a lace material into the plastic. It is really unbelievably strange. See, I'm taking the double-sided, oh, I'm trying to get it in the camera for you there, double-sided tape off. Isn't that funny? That's from a thrift store. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use the side that looks like real lace right there. And then I'm going to put a piece on the back so that it looks like real lace on the back. And then the plastic will be on the inside and you won't see it. Look at it, rolls and rolls and rolls. <laughs> you can tell that's plastic, can't you? And then you can tell that's material. Wow, that was something. And it was super sticky when I took the double-sided tape off, but I did put liquid on it because I don't trust that anything. And especially from a thrift store, if it's been sitting there for who knows how long, you could lose that sticky really quick, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see, after I just got done that disappointment that the switch won't be coming in the next few weeks, I am going to put it out of my mind and carry on with my card. Now, when you make a card, if you're new to uh, making cards, you don't have to worry about the poundage of the card front, like your original piece that you're going to work on because you're going to add so many layers. The weight is not going to be a problem here. Okay, you want to glue this down as well. That's uh, another thing I had to remember, just glue it down. Also, this gives me support to put some added accessories onto this because it has the plastic weight on it and it has the material weight on it and you'll see that I do use this to my advantage. I did uh, the, this was a funny card, I did the front of the card was supposed to be the inside of the card and I ended up flipping it so that I could put the two tone on tone cards on the inside. I started the outside and I really could not, there, <laughs> See, I'm just, I, I walk around my craft room, I find something, I throw it literally onto the island uh, for me to use. And then I walk over here and I throw that on the island. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I wake. Yes. And what was I saying here? Um, I can't even remember. Isn't that sad? But can I add this? If anybody knows where I can order that switch. Uh, big Shot Machine, the electric Big Shot Machine, if you would email me, I would be thrilled. I have looked for that, uh, well, a couple hours this morning after I heard I couldn't get that one until August, and I said I can't wait till then. I'll try and find another one. So here I'm adding hot glue. I want to cover this plastic part because where you took the uh, double-sided tape off it is plastic just on that side so I had this beautiful frill I'm just going to take that off yes you don't have to do this because really with vintage cards you're doing so much cover-up and layers that uh, you really don't have to be that precise but sometimes I do like to be at the start and uh, here we go so I'm going to talk to you as if you were new to card making like I was six years ago. The thing about making vintage cards for me now from experience, from I started with vintage cards, that's the look I like, shabby chic vintage, 
And uh, so this really is a comfortable place for me to be in when I'm working with this. That's why I think I like albums, whether they're um, paper albums or whether they're lace albums. I enjoy the process. And uh, can you see that I'm drinking Pepsi right there? Oh, Carol. Now I'm taking my big Gemini and I am trying to remember. The reason why I'm getting another machine, I'm going to tell you, is the big shot switch takes the big dies. The Gemini, the big Gemini has nine inches across, but it's very thin. And the one thing I didn't know when I ordered the Gemini, you have to have your die cuts facing up. And when you are five years of doing it with your dies down, look at my mat, my magnet mat. It is torn to shreds from my dies being the other way around. Yes, yeah, so I want to... Uh, I want to get that other one and use my Gemini as a spare or something. So here we go. Now, when I was making my vintage uh, material albums, I used to get meat wrap paper and I would photocopy onto a piece of um, material like muslin and then I'd have the meat wrap on the other side to run through my uh, machine, like my photocopier. And that, I had that picture in my stash from an album I did before. Okay, let's stop here. I'm doing toilet paper roses. I love making toilet paper roses. And I would have made that the topic, you know, the highlight, but I was not in the frame. So I didn't want people to get real excited that I was showing you step by step. But I will try right now to tell you how you do it. You spray down your toilet paper, I would say six layers on top of each other. Spray it all over so that it's not dripping but it's very damp. You're going to fold over to get your stamen on the inside so that it has that nice curl. Then you're going to only cut little pieces of oval and shape one like that. See how I've shaped one? And I've put it on the wet. Keep spraying it. it oh, that's glue. Keep spraying it if it falls off. Now notice I'm taking an oval, just an oval piece out of my toilet paper there. I'm going to start it off set and bend it down right like that. Now you don't need to have glue on this, but you do have to spray it with water for now because once it, to stay on there, once it dries, my friends, it's on there for good. It's not falling off. Toilet paper, anything creative. I do my carnations, I do my lilies, and I do my roses and toilet paper when I need a quick rose or carnation or a lily. Toilet paper is the easiest way to get a flower for a project. And here I am thinking I'm in the camera and I'm not and I really apologize because that's so frustrating. But all you're doing is cutting an oval. You can cut it across on the bottom and offset each oval onto don't don't it doesn't matter how long it gets for now because we'll cut that off okay offset your ovals like this then I'm going to show you a different way that you can make a rose a bigger rose with toilet paper and the thing about toilet paper when you wet it say I'm doing the carnation I am going to heat use my heat gun on top and open up all those layers of toilet paper so they're nice and light uh, because I'm heating them and I'm pushing all that toilet paper out. You'll see it in the in the flower I make, the carnation. That's the beauty of toilet paper projects. It sticks if it's wet enough. You have to have your sprayer right there. That's what I'm doing there. Spray it on there or put a little dab of glue for now, just a little dab, and look at that. Is that not a beautiful rose? And then I took my um, um, Copic uh, gun, you know, that I spray with, and I just turned on my machine down there under my island, under my feet there, my electric, whatever it is that blows air up through that hose, and I spray them whatever color I want my roses to be. And uh, yeah, and just use your fingers to maneuver. You can separate your toilet paper to get the look of, uh, the, of it separated. Now, isn't that a gorgeous rose? 
Then I went, I guess I'm going to put some more on there. Then I grabbed some wire from another uh, flower that I had. I had a grouping of tiny, tiny flowers. So I grabbed the wire from one of them and then I twisted it onto my rose to stay there while I was still working. Uh, because sometimes they dry quicker and you don't want to always be sopping them with water. So just grab a piece of uh, twisty uh, from another flower, you know, the wire. Yeah, you'll see me do that, or I don't know if I already did it while I was talking here. But that's what I do, and then I set my rows aside. And the key to this is ovals, cut your toilet paper in ovals, and offset each one. And in the next rows, I'll show you that I do four ovals when I cut it. And I want you to see how beautiful this rose is. You And it looks like those soft tissue paper roses, the nice light paper roses. When it dries, it's gorgeous. And you'll see that on my card. You, I took close-ups of it so you could see that. Now here, I printed out this uh, vintage lady in her beautiful flowers and she's holding her hat. And I did it. I have a tutorial with meat wrap. See the meat wrap behind there? Now, when you're doing it on uh, lace, you take the meat wrap off. But because I wanted that thickness for on my card, because my card is paper, I kept the meat wrap on the back of my photocopy sheet. Okay, so I am just jumping to this while my roses and my carnations are drying. But I'll go back to that. You'll be able to see it. And uh, here I'm just doing a little think through. I want to have an acetate piece on the top. So I'm going to add double sided tape only on three sides. The side, the opposite side, the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to leave the one side. The reason for that is I didn't want to hide her hand holding the basket. And I would have using the quarter inch tape here. I could have put the, the eighth of an inch tape but I didn't, and it held its spot using three layers. And I'm not doing a shaker, I just want it to look like a glass frame. I'm going to make my own frame. See how you can take the meat wrap off, but I'm not going to. I want, I, I needed it heavy for this project, so I left the meat wrap on the back of my printout from my photocopier. This is a printed uh, that I found online, and uh, it's really pretty and it's in the teal and the pinks. It's gorgeous and the ivory, which is lovely. So I have the acetate on top and we're going to make our own frame and I'd say about six seconds. I'll show you how to make a frame. The fastest frame ever. It's gonna look very vintage. You're gonna love it. So here you go. I don't know exactly what I am doing here to take something off, but I'm checking out what I have to work with. I have this piece of vintage lace I'm going to cut out and it's going to cover I'd say three quarters of this side. Keeping in mind I want to see that uh, Martha Stewart punch with the lace on it. I don't want to cover that up after taking all that time to you know punch it up. So we have this lovely piece of lace. Just find a nice piece of lace or a doily you have around the house and it'll work for you. Uh, the other thing I want to say is when you're doing a vintage card, I told you this in the last, well I didn't tell you, I shared with you in the last video, that take a day and photocopy, I'm sorry, and die cut everything you think you're going to use on your cards. Because I make four-sided cards, I do a lot of die cutting, but that way I have a lot of uh, choices on my next project that I don't use on this. But I can say I use more than half of what I die cut. And then I put it all around me. I put it all around me. So the first day I do all my die cuts. I don't want to be designing and having to die cut at the same time. My mind cannot stop like that. Just stop. Oh, I got to die cut these. Stop. Oh, I've got to cut this. Stop. I've got, oh, I got to die cut. No. You want to die cut everything. Take a day and just do all of your die cutting. Get out all your dies and go crazy. Then sit down and design. And you will notice if I pull back on the camera, you'll see thousands of die cuts. 
It seems like it was probably not a thousand, Carol. What are you talking about? But there's quite a few. And then we're going to work on covering this doily. Uh, only on the spots where it's not lace, you know. And um, you, you don't need a plan, but you do need a, a little idea. You don't have to have it all planned out, but you have to have an idea of what you're going to do. Here's my ID, idea. My ID. Do you want my ID? Yeah. <laughs> um, please forgive me. I'm so disappointed in not getting that big shot switch. That, um, yeah, I heard the changing the name on that too. I, heard, I got a lot of things. See, look at that. I got a lot of info today when I had to um, cancel that because I couldn't wait till August. I got to see if I can find it somewhere else. So here we go. I'm going to show you the die cuts. You know, do some butterflies, do some frames, do some sentiments, do a few oh, uh, ovals uh, that look like frames. Leaves are really good. Filigree, oh, fill up on filigree. And I wanted to make a beautiful book. Okay, I, this is an Altenew die. It's just a notebook die. One die that looks like a book. You can see it there, and I did uh, three die cuts so that I had the inside guts right there, and I have the outside of the gut frame that I'm hanging on to that I will glue together three high so it's got that nice thickness of a book, and then we're going to put these three pages on the book. We're going to score them so that they fold, but first, yes, the Stampin' Up! Uh, Le Francais die that I love the font on this. Oh, the calligraphy on this is truly romantic. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, I don't know, like uh, writing. Okay, it's uh, calligraphy, brush letting, brush letter calligraphy falling together, and. Uh, Yes, make sure stamp off. You don't want it that dark. Not for a vintage card. Everything plays lightly. So stamp off your images, unless that's the look you're going for, you know. But I have to make sure that my La Francais is right side up when you're going to read it, right? So that one was. And then I can get another one by using the bottom of the stamp. Oh, yes. And then the third one, yeah, go to the side. I kind of go in the middle. There you go. And then I remember, Carol, you have to do the backs of them. You have to do the backs of them because you're going to turn the pages. Somebody's going to turn the pages and there's no, going to be no writing on it. So, yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm going, okay, I love this. And I did it in teal. No browns. I did it in the matching teal because it's going on the back page that I decided to design in teals and pink. So there's that story. So let's get out our scoreboard. This is the little Martha Stewart scoreboard. And I like to use the, uh, the thing with the ball on the end of it. My embossing, is that what that is? Embossing tool? I don't know. But um, that's what I like to use. It doesn't rip. It doesn't have any angles on it. It's a round ball and it's small. A small round ball I do to score this. Then it hit me. You have to do the back, Carol. Get that stamp back. And I already cleaned it off and put it back. I already had put it away, so I had to go get it. There it is. And re-stamp it with the, um, it is a distress ink, of course, a little distress ink. And uh, do them all again, which takes five seconds. This is not rocket science. You will be able to do this in no time. Once you decide that you love the vintage shabby chic way to go, there's just three avenues. Do your die cutting one day, do your design work the next day, and then your edit voiceover if you do videos the third day. And uh, there you go. Boink. Yep. Go ahead. Do it again, Carol. And you can see that the middle one is that shiny wedding paper, and then the other two are 80 pounds, just plain white cardstock. You want to do a lighter cardstock on your book. It's a 100 pound weight. The middle 
shiny one's 80, but the other two are 100 pound weight paper that I cut out of that Alta New Book die. And if you're interested in any of these, please uh, let me know on my YouTube channel or over on my blog, and I will link it for you if you're interested. I decided that I really can't take all that time to look up everything and link them with uh, right now. You know, it's just a busy time for me right now. And um, yeah, so if you would just leave me a comment and truly I will look it up for you if you're interested in anything you see that I'm using. Okay. And uh, Carolyn asked me, hi Carolyn, if I would show you how I do different versions of making boxes to send out in the mail. And I'll work on that for you, Carolyn, for sure. And, uh, yeah. And if you're listening, I know you're listening to this, Pam. Don't you make me a birthday card. You don't have to make me a birthday card, truly. I don't expect that at all. At all. But thank you that you told me you wanted to. But uh, if you don't have opportunity, I know you are working, uh, please don't give it a second thought. Uh, just knowing you were going to do that is enough for me. I'm very thankful. Yeah. The old 66th birthday is coming up next week, Tuesday. Oh, I can't believe it. I feel like I'm like 21 uh, in my brain and I feel like I'm 295 in my body. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> some days, some days. You've got to admit it, some days you don't move as fast in your 60s. I try to, but, you know, some days it's just, it just doesn't happen. That's all I can say. Let's just leave it. Now, I want to make my frame, I am going to use this frame, like I'm going to make a shaker, but I'm not putting any shaker guts in it. I'm going to showcase a piece of uh, lace, beautiful, um, pearled out uh, piece of um, lace. You're going to love it. I've used it before because I love the, this uh, pearls and, you know, the stuff I take off wedding gowns, the bling bling. That's what I'll call it, the bling bling. And if you're doing a white on white card, make sure that you are always putting a piece of paper down or cleaning your surface. Um, at first, it's not so bad. You can cover it up. But later on, yeah. See how I all of a sudden my... Oh, Pardon me, I'm sorry that came in. Um, I had this frame. Remember back in the day we used to buy these frames? I don't know. Everybody was putting frames on uh, canvases and stuff. So I have a little stash of them. But the weight was just too, it was too heavy for me on this card. And I tried to keep this card as light as I could because it is four sides. So, um... Yeah, and then uh, just, yeah, move it all out. Get it out of the way. There's my uh, toilet paper roses. Now, another thing you can do with your toilet paper roses is stick the bottom end, you know, the long end from putting all of those oval pieces on into lace. And, and try and find lace that has the shape of leaves. Oh, my. It's beautiful. Now, I got out these sets of paper. You're going to need, I wanted to match the dress, this ivory. So I had a couple of packs of this uh, paper pack. It's, it's from Gorgeous. I love it. And you can see I've used it before. And I'm just looking for, for um, three, let me see, do I need three sheets, I think. Two or three sheets I took out. This is gorgeous. They named it right. It's gorgeous, gorgeous paper. It's 8x8, eight eight, which I really like. And you have all of these cardboard pieces you can cut out and use on your um, projects, which is nice as well. So here we go. You can see I have all kinds of things. Go to your stash where you have your leftovers and get those out. And um, this is... <laughs> I have to share this. When I do a project, I take out, out of the packages, it's maddening, all the dyes I think I'm going to use, right? I take it out of the packaging. Well, guess what? It takes me forever to go find the packaging and put them back in. That's not a good idea to do. And then I shove them in a, a see-through plastic thing for me to use on my next project because I knew I was doing two vintage projects in a row. 
So why put all of this back in the boxes for now? I can do that and go insane on another day. It's not going to. <laughs> yeah, look at me. Oh, okay, I guess I don't want to use any of that. Let's put it back. Pour it all over the table and then put it back. And you can see I got out some other dies I had in my stash. I wanted to. The Victorian window, I didn't end up using that either. But here we go. I think I am making, let me see, the carnation. Uh, with carnations, you want it to be nice and fine. Roll yourself off a little bit here. Uh, you may not use it all. You can put it back in your bathroom. Uh, wet it down so it starts sticking. So it's uh, toilet paper. Oh, I'm really going there. Yep. Get, turn it over. Get it nice and damp. Fold it in half. And here's where we start. This will be uh, carnations. Go up. Go down, make them long. Uh, with roses, you make the oval short, but this you want long. So get that nice and wet. We're going to zoom in. Boy, I was trying to get the carnation in there for you. Roll it up like this, and there's, oh, no, nope. roll it back. There's the start. And you could make this a rose as well. Don't wet it down as much so that you can separate your toilet paper leaves. Look at that. Here we go. Take your pokey tool, start separating, and you're going to get a big rose. I wanted a big rose. That's what this one was. See how easy that was? It was just cut one oval and then go down, leave a little space, come up, leave a little space, come down, and then separate your toilet paper. Then take the heat tool so it dries right away, and it will curl and stay exactly where you dried it, my friends. That you will be in love with your roses doing it this way. Separate those toilet paper pieces. Tuck it down to make a nice stamen on the inside. There you go. Separate, separate, separate. You can't separate as well if you really put a lot of water to it. You just need enough to keep it together. And look at that. You have a rose in three seconds. I'm telling you, my friends, it is the way to go for roses is take out your toilet paper and have a blast. Tuck it down in there. Get your spray, Carol. Come on. Get your spray. I needed some rose buds. That's why I'm doing it the quick way here. I needed another one quick, so all I did was spray it. This is going to be my carnation. Okay, I'm going to scrunch up a little stamen in the center. Get over there, Carol. And I'm just going to turn it in a circle. Look at this. I grabbed the center and smushed the center of the toilet paper square like with my hand. Go right into the center, smush it all together, and start forming a carnation. It's round. It all comes together because you're taking it from the center of the square piece of toilet paper. And there you have it. I wanted a small carnation. Do you see how fast that is, my friends? That's how quick toilet paper art is. It's that quick. And if you are interested, I will do a video just making toilet paper flowers, if you are truly interested, and keep it in the frame. But I was really trying to go, 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 and get out some projects. This is where I'm talking. Get a piece of lace, cut out the guts, and slide your flower down. See? And I liked the look of this square, and I liked my rows on the inside, right like that. And I'm going to put this, this is going to be the start of the focal point of the left-hand side of my vintage page right there. Now I am going to use my Copic air gun and I'm going to spray that. You'll see that later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's another suggestion to slide your toilet paper roses down into lace. If it has shapes somewhat to leaves, it looks very pretty. Even if it doesn't, it looks pretty. I mean, how can you mess up lace, right? Now, I have an envelope that looks like it's a lace envelope. It's not. It just has that appearance. And I took the flap right off of it. Um, oh, I guess that's not what I'm doing right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the paper thing from the gorgeous line of paper. You just want to have, if you're doing tone on tone, um, your first layer. So this is setting a layer of paper. This has nothing to do with if it's going to stay there and you're going to see that color. 
but I'm going to do a base for now because vintage cards is all about layering. It's all the way you layer, you know, which way angles, you know, angle here, angle here. I'm sure you see it on Pinterest. Beautiful projects. There's so many talented people on YouTube. I can't even believe, you know, um, how beautifully creative they, people are. It's wonderful, you know, to get inspiration. And I wish I had more time to go get some inspiration. <laughs> Seem to be busier now than ever. I don't know why. But anyway, I'm going to distress the edges of this paper. You can see I don't put two of the same papers because when I do four, my four-sided cards, that's exactly it. I treat each side of the page like it's the front of the page. Um, the inside, if I want to run it together like as a theme, I will keep the, you know, pretty close. And on the inside, it's going to be tone on tone beige and tone on tone white. Just so you get some ideas. And it's going to be tone on tone as if it was a wedding card. I did the inside as if it was wedding cards for you. Just to give you some wedding ideas. And the outside, I suppose, you know, working with lace, you could use it no matter if you had color in it or it was tone on tone for weddings. It's beautiful. I love my Xyron machine to run through quickly because I know it's going to stick and stay. Xyron's middle name is stick and stay. You don't have to worry about it. And then with vintage, you don't really have to cut this if you don't want. You could tear it and put your paper in there. So I'm trying to think now. You know I have to have a curled up page. That's just a given. So to get the same color when I turn it up, right, if I roll the bottom left corner up, I'm not going to have the same color unless this paper is colored the same on each side, which it isn't. This gorgeous paper is white on one side and the pattern is on the other side. So you're going to have to rip a page. You can rip the page or uh, the corner you're working on, flip it around, I had another sheet so it was good. You just want to flip a corner and then glue it on like that so that when you tear the corner you're going to have the same paper design. See that? So you're just putting that opposite there and then you're going to curl it up, get your hot glue, put some glue down, come on roll that thing up and you have a beautiful corner. Decide where you're going to put this corner because this is a very pretty look for vintage, isn't it? This curled up corner thing going on. I love it. You can put flowers, lace. Uh, your creative mind goes crazy when you do vintage shabby sheet cards, I think. It really, if, you, if that's what you like to do. And I have so much lace and materials because I bought up to do lace albums, you know, so I went on a rampage buying wedding dresses and taking the applique all off of all the wedding gowns, the wedding uh, beautiful headpieces, the wedding trains. Uh, I shared that on my Instagram if you want to go over there and check that out. That's where I had pictures. Isn't that lady gorgeous? Can you imagine getting ready? In, in those days, like to go out? Wow, that's a lot of material to drag around with you, isn't it? Can't even imagine. So here we go. I have a ton of die cuts out and I just wanted to make my own frame. A shabby chic frame. So go around it with a pencil, cut the center out, snip snip, and make your frame. There you go. This is how easy a frame is. Doot, 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 doot. Now you have to cut it uh, in from the cut you made, right? Because otherwise you'd be seeing the edges of your cut. So use that uh, tracing as um, just as a pitch, you know, just as a picture view of what your uh, little car or your little what your picture is as far as uh, the length and the width. Whew, that was hard, wasn't it? Just don't cut beyond the frame of your pitch is what I was trying to say, my friends. It's uh, 65 degrees in Ontario, 60, 65, but the wind's picking up and rain is coming in. Rained all morning and then it stopped and rain's coming back. But I heard Saturday 
which is tomorrow. It's going to be a lovely day. Lovely day. And uh, today's the 15th, right? So, <laughs> yeah, Tuesday is my birthday. Uh, I don't make a fuss, birthday fuss, even though I'm mentioning it, I really don't. And then tape. Just tape. Grab your roll of tape right there. Mine happens to be a record player of tape. And I shared that where I got that on a video. And there you have it. Instant frame. Yep. You can do, you don't have to distress the side that's going up close to a straight line if you don't want to. I have to just make sure that it's inside of the actual, um, I'm looking at it thinking, what is it, Kara? The space that I have to work with, how's that? That is my palette, so to speak, that I'm working on. And uh, there you have it. There's my vintage frame. Isn't that lovely? I just love it. And does it match the dress? Of course it does. I am sure that besides myself, we have a ton of paper hanging around that we have to use up. Whether it's 6x6, 8x8, 12x12, we have a lot of paper. And another thing that makes wonderful frames is magazines. If you have old magazines, my friends, Go rip that out. Farmer's Almanac, if you find Farmer's Almanac at thrift stores, get those. They make beautiful frames. You have all of that gorgeous, especially if you get older Farmer Almanac books, they are already yellowed out and they're just gorgeous. The print and the font and the black and white, oh, it's crazy. Oh, here I go. I'm just trying to get, I get my copic gun to work and get that nib at the right end and I'm going to spray her down as soon as I get it going. Get it away from my picture though. There it goes. Oh yes. Broke down a couple of years ago. I think it wasn't bought a compressor for Copics. I got it at uh, Allen Hudson and they, she always has a really nice price on it. I, I think it's like, I don't know, in the $300 range. 200 uh, US, 200 and something. Uh, it's not a bad, it's a beautiful compressor. I've never had a problem with it. Never had a problem with this compressor. So um, I'll, if you're interested, I'll send the link out on my blog. So here we go, covering up my picture again. Don't forget to do that if you're, even if you're using, I started out without a compressor. I used to use just the ones you got at Michael's, you know, for 20 bucks. And then I upgraded to another one, and then finally I said, no, I'm using too many air cans, air, you know, containers. I need to get a compressor. So, yeah, one of my birthdays <laughs> a couple of years ago, that's what I asked for is a compressor. Well, what would you like, a new hat, a new dress? No, a uh, compressor, please. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny how when you create that song? No, I'd like... Um, 14 uh, dies from Spellbinders and yeah, uh, the whole set of Copics, please. Yeah, that that's uh, instead of uh, outfits and you know, pajamas and house cold or slippers, we're always thinking craft goodies. So, this is one of my I'm putting stamens in from another flower I had in my stash inside of my toilet paper rose. Uh, just to add a little bit, I didn't need to because obviously it has the stamen wrapped around, but I thought it would add a little bit of character. I'm just showing you how nice the uh, the picture looks with just taking five, you know, one minute to cut it out, you tear it out yourself. Now here you can use your little uh, square ink and blow it with your compressor onto the shape right there. I just wanted some of that vintage photo around the edges of my toilet paper rows. Then I'm going to glue this up and down so it looks like my rose has uh, leaves. Then I'm going to spray it with vintage, uh, let me see, vintage photo uh, and the teal which made a nice green together. It was really pretty. But you're going to have to cut it uh, in certain spots so that it'll fold up and fold down. Otherwise, it's too tight. 
right? I'm sure we all know about that. So put your glob of glue down, get your pokey tool, and take out anything you don't think is going to hinder the look of pushing it up and pushing it out. I'm too close there, aren't I? I'm sorry. There you have it. Put your glob of glue. Oh yeah, I'm right to this screwdriver. I love this screwdriver. My husband gave it to me. Um, he gets all this stuff, you know, in the mail. And uh, I said, oh, boy, could I use that? I love it. I use it all the time now if you see me with it. It's just a little tiny screwdriver, and it gets into those little places that we need to get into. And here uh, you can see how pretty the vase with the flowers she has her hand on there and the dress, how it matches that paper so beautifully, doesn't it? And then you have the flowers you know, they're in this pink kind of uh, salmon. Thank you very much, everybody, that helped me um, with the last tutorial that I had with my vintage card. It was salmon, color, and coral. Kind of a salmon coral color together. And this is what this is as well. Isn't it funny? It's all running through. Maybe a little bit more to the pink, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Now I'm going to take off a few things. Oh, that glue came undone. And I'm making sure that it shuts properly. And then all of a sudden, I thought to myself, oh, there's my other rose. That's toilet paper, my friends. And then you can make separate leaves. Just make separate leaves, scrunch them all up like this, and put them in after to make your rose look more open. Out of toilet paper, my friends. Uh, you have to try it. It is amazing. How quickly you make a rose with just uh, cutting out oval shapes straight on the bottom and then a nice oval mm -hmm. you can do round two I guess it wouldn't bother it here's I'm into my feather stash feathers are pretty to have on a vintage card because they're light and airy <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry sorry I just had to really cough there <clears throat> Sorry, wow, I can't, I might have to take a break here. I did the, this too high, um, one on top of the other. That sounds better, doesn't it? And you can tell I have a sore throat, can't you? It comes in and out, I'm talking up a storm, then all of a sudden it's like uh, bronchitis and I can't talk anymore. And it goes in and out, just like this, just like I didn't wait any time, then all of a sudden it'll come back. Yeah, you don't want to cover up too much there, Carol. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. I'm going to try to talk softer. Maybe that'll help so it doesn't go into a, I don't go into a frantic panic. There we are. And if you're new to cards, try to keep all of the objects you use in um, odd numbers. So here I've got three down for now. And then whatever you decide, oh, here's some corrugated board I had. Now this is going to be funny when you see this because I'm working on this like it's the inside of my card. And how do you know that? I keep folding it to see whether I'm adding too much bulk. <clears throat> and then, excuse me, I'm sorry. And then <clears throat> I, um, oh, I'm getting out the air gun and uh, I'm going to, yeah, spray it on a piece of paper for the match as well. I want to do my roses in that uh, kind of coral color. Excuse me a minute. There, I made a little bit of tea and honey. So I'm back and it's soothing my throat. And that feels better. So here, what I wanted to tell you, I'm going to talk lower because it tends to get raspy as I get excited and my voice gets louder. Even when I'm doing a voiceover, I love watching the process. I think of different things you know, things I could have done differently. I'm dyslexic there. And you can see I'm blowing <laughs> it on a sheet of paper underneath there. I wanted to match her hat and the vase with my Copics. Get as close as I could. You, oh, there comes my uh, little screwdriver. That is that is a must to have in my craft room right now. I don't want to lose that. And uh, yeah, isn't that pretty? I love toilet paper roses. I don't know why I didn't think to make that, uh, you know, 
to make that a priority when I was doing other vintage things. I forget about the toilet paper roses. And when you see the carnation, how quickly it is to make a carnation out of toilet paper. And when they dry, my friends, they stay exactly where they're put. Toilet paper to toilet paper dries like glue. Now, I want to get in to all of the creases that I folded over on my rows to be dark. Because it's not getting the sun. It's folded on the flap of the rose is folded underneath. So I want to make that nice and dark where the sun isn't hitting it, just as if I was coloring it with Copics. I'm going to take the same strategy and work it on uh, blowing the color onto my toilet paper roses here. I tried to put, that's the caramel one. Now remember I bought my, um, uh, it's uh, what's well, right here. It's, I think it's mother of pearl acrylic in a squeeze bottle and then just the acrylic paste in a squeeze bottle that I got at uh, Walmart <clears throat> excuse me and uh, some time ago actually my sister got it and uh, pretty sure that's the way it went and uh, we were looking for things for one another uh, which doesn't matter here I'm putting liquid verse mark you know I have that liquid verse mark I am putting it on there so that I can put white embossing powder down in there. If you find, there it is, Mother of Pearl, but it's acrylic based, acrylic paste, and uh, but the color is Mother of Pearl. It's so thick. It's not liquidy. It's thick like acrylic. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to add the prills. So I was adding the Versamark and the Mother of Pearl acrylic paint. Just grab some acrylic paint. You just want something that's going to dry so your prills will stay on. So uh, whatever you have in a paste form, take your pokey tool and poke it down in. Now I'm going to shoot some air at it with a color if you want. Just to see if, and see how light it is. It's almost white. It's almost a white marker. It's a creamy white uh, to cover up some of the dark. And then you can use your white gesso and paint over it if you don't like it. If you find your roses too dark and it's not what you wanted, it looks very dark from where I'm looking at it now, but it isn't, my friends. And you can go over. See how I'm going over the spine of this uh, feather with the off-white Copic? and taking off the brown. I, I wanted you to see that vein going up through the uh, beautiful thing, and the, uh, beautiful feather, a thing. You know, I'm a thing, and then I'm gonna do that to that thing, and that thingy dingy over there. Yes, so I'm spraying on E6000 over top so that my prills don't go anywhere. They're gonna stay on here. And what's really funny, this ends up my front page. I just I just put my paper inside out and I used it as a front page. No longer is this going to be the inside because my flowers were getting thicker. And you can really see the distinction of these roses, my friends. They do look like roses. You can stop the picture at the end of the tutorial and see that when I tell you that something is very easy to do, my friends, it is that easy. I don't approach anything that, uh, that's a pansy that I had done. Sorry, I did pansies there, so they're just flat roses. I mean, uh, here's the metallic luster. I haven't used this in forever, and I loved the color. So here I'm lightening up my roses. My toilet paper roses have um, dried, so they stayed. I had this... Uh, a package of, I think I show it, of butterflies, and one of them has um, half butterflies. They're just, you know, the one wing, and then the state. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Uh, I, I will stop the video and tell you whose uh, stamp dies these are, because I may forget to link them, but I'm putting that beautiful luster on them, on the front and the back, and I'm going to set this half butterfly right there. It takes your eye off the darker roses, but you will see that I do lighten the roses up with gesso. 
I, I lighten it up with the luster cream there and it doesn't look that dark. Now these are Tim Holtz little flowers. They're the tiny, tiny little carnations or little buds of uh, something. I don't know what they are. I'm not a flower specialist here, horticologist or whatever you call them. Um, but they're nice tiny white. Now if you find something dark that you've put on as your focal point and you want to lighten it up add white. That's the easiest thing to do. And here's the corrugated piece I had hanging around the stash that I put on the corner and I wiped some of the mother of pearl on there because that because that really shines. It's beautiful. And you can see my stash is getting tighter and tighter. It's coming towards me now because I'm getting really excited about designing. So I want to see it right in front of me there. I do want to use this as I used in my other card, the leaves. I love this cluster, but I didn't want to use so many. So I cut them off and I put, the, I tucked them where the corrugated board is on the lower right. Right there. Yeah. Lower right, 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 right. That's it. Right there. And, uh, yeah, and I brushed on that gorgeous luster cream. I think it's by DecoArt. And some of these things, my friends, have been in my stash forever. They're not new supplies, and they work. They're creamy, and they're just as smooth as when I bought them. I'm just taking a dollar store brush where nothing's a dollar, you know, my dollar store, and uh, brushing it on the leaves so that they shine. I did not want to put any veins or anything. I wanted it to be um, just, I don't know, as light as that feather is there. Didn't want to bring too much attention to the leaves. So I left them with just that luster cream rub on there. What does it say? Deco Art, yeah. Deco Art Metallic Champagne, I think it's called. And then I'll touch them to the white flowers just on the tips to give it a little bit of color. And now um, we're going to design using um, filigree. I just went to town on the filigree. I need to color this and you can see how intricate this dye is right here. It, if I started using pencil or uh, when I use my Copics direct to paper, you have to be very, very careful to hang on and only do one little Thing at a time or it is going to rip and I don't know why I wasn't thinking just to get my uh, my heat gun like you know it's plugged in and uh, my air gun and yeah I did eventually I'm doing it like this I did the light uh, teal it's almost I think it's a triple zero and then I come in with the darker I just hooked up my air gun there and sprayed it it was quick and easy so there you have it. It's coming together, but you have to remember, keep your focal point in one spot. That's the big cluster of anything that you do. And then if you're going to branch out with a lot of things, which you do in vintage, keep those other piles not as heavy looking. Don't put so many supplies on there. And I'll show you that a little later. So here we go, we did a dark and a light on that beautiful filigree. Oh, my camera wasn't on. This really bothered me right there. There's my carnation. Uh, and that's the exact color of the flowers that are all around her basket and all around the ground was that corally pink. So I made my toilet paper carnation. I am putting Versamark down in there because this uh, embossing powder was a bit too dark so I need to add some white. I need to just whiten it up. I'll wait, I'll wait. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to lighten it up because you don't want two darks on each side. That just offsets everything. Oh, I'm lighting it. The first color of coral was from my Copic. This here is a embossing powder that I had that I am going to completely cover this carnation because I'm going to come in and lighten it all up with white embossing powder from LDRS Creative. That white is so white that it's wonderful. So let's dry it all up and get the uh, 
Versamark and the embossing powder to melt into one another. It's gorgeous. Then on all the tips of this carnation, I put um, white. So instead of going light on the tips of the flower, I go, or dark, excuse me, I go light. And uh, it just, I want that cluster of roses. When you look at the card, it doesn't look this dark. Trust me, that brown cluster there, it is not as dark as it looks. Um, it wouldn't matter if it was, but I'm just saying that to me, you can't see the distinction of the flowers, but I add white to those roses also, and you'll see that they do separate themselves. I had another one of the butterflies from this gorgeous butterfly set. And so there that butterfly went up in the corner and now you can see it's coming together. You put that filigree, I think I put four different filigree strips going up the right hand side. I had a fa FaceTime come in <laughs> and I had to stop the video. It was funny, I'm trying to do that and not miss my son's call and yeah, right by it. here's the texture paste. This is acrylic texture paste in white and it's in the tube. I just love it. And if you're interested, I will, I will put the link on my blog. And you just squirt it out and there's that glass. This glitter glass is fantastic. I've never seen anything shine as much as this. Now, when you deal with glitter glass, my friends, there it is there. And it is diamond. It, it is on the bottom of the jar, it says diamonds. And I'm telling you, it shines like that. But don't use your hand to swipe them into a pile. They will go into your skin. It's glass. It's cut glitter glass. Okay. And yeah, you get that in your skin. You'll be itching for days. So it will come out. But I mean, you know, who wants to do this? So just grab two sheets of paper and scoop it up. I ordered this here. Um, I will leave a, a link. I don't know if her shop is still available. I ordered this about three years ago. And it is to make a Cameo album. You get all Cameo in cardboard, Cameo heads that were, uh, you know, this is a set. I bought it as a set. I don't know how many sets I bought, but it's in my trunk. I, I had one out. I try not to put everything away at a site. I keep, you know, like if I get 10 of these sets, I'll keep one out somewhere because, and then I'll store the rest. Otherwise I forget I have it. Now, I mean, lace, cotton lace in cream looks beautiful. Just tying a bow in it. Then I grab some lace pieces up and see where the bow is. Uh, and then I thought, oh, oh, this isn't going to be the front page. Or, sorry, this isn't going to be one of my inner pages. It's going to be the front. It's a perfect front. So I just reversed it. And there you have it. This is the beginning of the front of my four-sided vintage card, my friends. And I had this in my stash. I got this at a, at a not a thrift store, but at a consignment uh, vintage shop. And it has a coin in a penny coin from 1938, I think it said in there, uh, in the little purse part. And somebody crocheted that little purse and little, and little hat. And it was the perfect colors, but you know what? It was too um, bright. I couldn't use it for this project. So here we go. This is the set that I bought of many sets. It comes with uh, set A, B, C. It has the big cameo, and you know I'm in love with cameo jewelry, cameo anything. I love cameos. I love, I buy cameo things to make my jewelry. <clears throat> and this is pre cut. Pardon me. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Uh, this is pre cut cardboard, laser cut, and I love this look. Now, I couldn't have the brown because I'm doing a white and cream tone on tone. So, and I want it to be in crackle paste, but your crackle paste will take forever. Oh no, my friends, I'm going to show you how to make crackle paste with tissue paper. It looks identical to crackle paste, my friends. It will cover up that dark brown cardboard like you never knew it was dark brown. It will look white. All white? Let's get into this. I know you're going to just love the process. 
So take your white tissue paper and set your project aside. Get a piece of paper, line this up from the bottom. I'm using white texture paste, white gesso, excuse me. I'm painting it on right out of the jar, okay? It's from Michaels. It's, a, it's Artist Loft White Acrylic Gesso, 16 fluid ounces if you're interested. Put it on there because it changes your cardboard color to white. Right off the bat, right? And then you're going to take your tissue, scrunch it up, put it over top of your tissue, over top of your gesso, and then paint the sides. Don't forget to put gesso on the sides of the cardboard because you want it all to look. This is a white on white tone portion of my card and I want it to look like crackle paste. Well, you're getting the crackle right there with tissue paper and gesso. And when it dried, it truly looked like I put crackle paste on it. And it's vintage, it's beautiful. It just makes you smile, my friends, doing this because it's such a quick feature and it's instant. You take your heat gun to it if you want to make more cracks and you want to make, you know, more uh, lines in the tissue, just add more tissue over top of your tissue and you will get a thicker version of the crackle paste instantly. That's the key for us, right? We want everything to be pretty instant. Although I don't like instant potatoes. Ugh, can't even stand the thought of it. Uh, powdered instant milk. Oh no, that's not going to happen. I do drink skim milk. I don't drink only in my cereal. You know, that's, I don't know why I said that. I guess it's instant. I, I love my, uh, you can't have cereal without milk in my book, but I, I use skim. I'm stuttering now. Uh, uh, I use skin. Yeah. Did I say skin? <laughs> skim. Sorry. I looked at that brown and I guess I was thinking of the color of skin. No, it's darker than that. And look. How beautiful this crackle looks. Oh, how vintage this is. And you can get this from die cut. If you have a good machine that die cuts, you take your cardboard and die cut four layers, you know, and there you have, and if you have old jewelry you see at thrift stores or in your stash, grab a cameo and slap it on there with some gesso on it and uh, some tissue of, oh yeah, he let, oh yeah, I love that, Carol, what a beauty. Oop, she's coming in. Then I took my crystal lacquer, and this is glossy accents, same thing. I'm going over, my. I want my cameo head to stand out like crazy. So I did a thick version, and out is out comes the diamond glitter. This is diamond glass, my friends, and I put this liberally on the cameo uh, head and neck. It's kind of the top portion, torso of her. And there you have it. You can brush the glass off into whatever you want later. Um, with, yeah, like that. Do not use your hands, my friends, with glass glitter. I have done it and you it's painful. It's like getting a little piece of hair in your eye, you know, and that can bother you for days. The same with glass glitter. You can work with it directly, but don't swipe it with your hand. You're asking for trouble. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. And do it over top of a uh, paper towel so you can throw the paper towel right out. And when it dries, you can just tap it off into your garbage and it's done. So let's just see here. We're finished the first page. You have the lace sticking out on the right hand side, which makes it an eight inch card, eight by eight and a half. And see how that uh, on the right lower carnation is very light. Well, I'm thinking I've got to lighten some more of that and my rose is up. So I get out my little uh, dental pick sticks I grab my liquid Versamark that you can see there and my LDRS Creative White Embossing Powder. And let's lighten everything up. That's, all, that's just how easy it is. Liquid Versamark in the bottle. Dip your pick stick down in there or if you want to use a Q-tip, whatever you have. Uh, some Chinese chopsticks. 
whatever you have around, you know. And uh, I'm going to add it to my carnation liberally, put it way down into the crevices, and add my uh, white embossing powder, and then heat set it, and then the paper, the toilet paper, comes alive with the heat. It frills up and separates more of that cluster of your carnation. And it looks so vintage. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. See how light it got right there? And then add the rest of it back onto your... Uh, don't waste it. Don't throw that in the garbage. Put it back onto your project somewhere. I put that on the roses. I put some of the embossing powder, believe it or not, on my left feather there. And heat set it. It heat set so fast it was... It didn't do a thing to my feather, but I mean, you have to do this heat thing quick. Yeah, get it off my person because that's uh, acetate I have over top of her, remember? With our, uh, oh, here we go with my little pick stick, liquid Versamark. Get it down in those dark places. Add your white embossing powder. It will only stick where the Versamark is. We don't have anything wet on there. I went back just to slow this portion down for you when I held it up into the camera. I was talking quite fast and you didn't see the exact um, goodness of what I did with that embossing powder. It looks beautiful. So here it is, slow mo. Yeah, slowly get off any little specks that you have with the powder. Then I'm going to lift it up, my friends, and look at those toilet paper roses take a good look at the shape of those roses and that carnation glitter. I'm in love with toilet paper flowers, my friends. So super easy. You may have to practice them for a little tiny bit, but not long. You'll get it. You really will. Okay, let's move on now to the inside of our card. So we're going to clean up a little bit. There I am showing you the envelope. I cut the flap off because it's it's like lace. I bought that at Michael's one time, a package of them. Then we're going to put our one, two, three, four layered cameo piece that we made with our tissue paper to look like crackle paste with the cameo with uh, our art glitter glaze and diamond dust on there. Oh, I'm telling you, I just fell in love with this. And I'm so glad that I remembered I had it, that I took one of these packages out of my stash and opened it up because I have not used these before, these uh, cardboard cutouts. So I'm glad I found it. And I'm using it as, you know, a bridal. This is going to be a bridal piece. So let's start designing with everything. The book is going to be the back of my uh, card. So even though I'm bringing it out now and again, it is not going to be there because I'm not putting any color. It's going to be a beige, the lightest beige tone on tone to the left, the color of that envelope uh, in the background, and then we are going to, I'm going to show you something. When you want to make something flat like I do, right, because this is the guts to the die, it's not separate cards. Take your hot glue and a silicone spatula and flatten your glue out. This way, that piece of page stays inside. We're doing the back side of this now. It's going to stay because you flattened it out on each side. And even though it was die cut from the same um, die, it's just one die that looks like a page, the guts came out and now I want the guts back in but I didn't have a ledge, right, to put it on. So all I did was turn it around, glued gun it in the center, take my silicone spatula and press down on it so it oozes on each side. And there you have it, my friends, an instant book from one die that the guts came out of the center of this uh, book page die from Altenew. Now we're going to add the second one. So we have white card base, that is that wedding paper that's 80% is in there. Uh, that really nice, soft, it has a little speck of the gold in it. It's so pretty. 
Now I'm going to add some crinkle white ribbon as my, um, what do you call that thing in your book, a book page holder. And I cut the bottom of that in a tag shape, right? Like you always see them, you know, page ribbons like that. Like, ee -ee, just a little bee. And then we're going to wait till you see what we do with it later. Because you can't see that. The crinkle ribbon is so uh, beautifully soft that it was hard to see. So I did add something, and I'll share that with you later. So here's my crinkle ribbon. I did three. Uh, you know, I just grabbed it and did loop, loop, loop three times. Loop, loop, loop. And then I tied it in a bow. Basically, that's it. You could tie it in a knot, too. If you don't want the bulk but I wanted it in different shapes down here and this was I think the last of my white crinkle ribbon so sad it's that linen vintage crinkle ribbon I call it I love it and uh, this I'm going to run this this was what I used to get my focal point in the front down with my toilet paper roses it was this piece that I ran that rose down through the center so that'll it'll come back to you. And you don't have to worry about with vintage cards it coming down off the card like this is. Look at that heart coming down off the page. Beautiful. That's what's supposed to do. This is starting to work for us, my friends. And this it will make a beaut. You could put that bow there. I didn't. I put it up to the right. And uh, when you make a decision, my friends, make it. Don't ponder it. It's like writing an exam when I was in medical school. You write the exam, and I always don't second guess yourself. Whatever the brain comes up with, if you're writing exams, um, that's what you put down. Don't go back. Don't overthink. Whatever your brain told you, if it's A, B, C, D, and you said, yep, that's got to be D. Then you put D, and you go, oh, well, maybe it was C. <gasps> maybe it was A. Don't do that. Don't overthink. The same with cards, my friends. Don't overthink. When your mind says put it up in the right-hand corner, stick it up there. Yes. Hold it there for a minute, of course, before you put the glue. You want to make sure it's not, you know, something you don't want to be there. But don't overthink it. And look at this piece off a wedding dress I had right there, that applique right there. I cut off about 40 of these or more in a little zip bag. So I took one of them out. See what you do when you get something... Do it all in one time. Take a week to cut all your applique off of a wedding dress and cut all of your satins and silks and everything that's on your wedding dress. Separate it into freezer bags. Zip them up. Put a uh, marker, magic marker. You don't have to be all fancy fancy with the machine to write everything down. You don't have to calligraphy. Take a great big black marker and put roses or put and the date. I date them when I did them, you know, on that date. Uh, I don't know why, but I do. And then um, you have all of your stuff contained in little bags. You're not hunting in gigantic bags. The freezer bags are wonderful for this, storing your laces and your appliques. So that's just a little suggestion. So here we go. The left side is going to be tone on tone in that beautiful uh, vintage beige color I call it it's like a creamy white um, yeah maybe that's I'll come up with another name but it's natural oh naturel. that's what it is it's a natural lace before it's been dyed colors it's beautiful and here I had lace that had pearls on it I'm on a mission let's go girl let's get that vintage stuff on there come on you don't have all day <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy to say once it's all done, right? Like once we've just like days and days and we're just working and working, thinking I got to clean this mess up. Oh, yeah, but you do. You put it all away and I suggest that you put it away in colors. Just get a big envelope and put it all in there. If everything's all white, put it all white in your envelope. If everything is colored, you don't have to color code at all. You go through 50,000 envelopes. Just put colored with your big black bulky thing. Oh, speaking of bulk, this is a thick piece of lace, my friends. Somebody crocheted this. This is a crocheted piece. 
uh, that I had um, in my stash. It was a thousand feet long and I just took a big gulp of it and this is the bulk of my card right here. This is the focal bulk, I'm going to call it. And it went perfectly because all the other laces are so soft and they are vintage laces, my friends. These are vintage laces. These weren't at the dollar store. I, and I love the bead work and I love the thought of somebody's little granny sitting and crocheting and doing these doilies by firelight and singing, you know, humming a nice old hymn and doing this. And that's why I take such special care to put everything together. Even though they came from the secondhand store, my friends, they were made by somebody, uh, somebody's nanny granny. And you want to, well, maybe not nanny granny, but that's what I envision. And I'm a nanny granny. And, uh, you know, if I went to all that trouble, I want somebody to fall in love with my work and use it to the best of their ability, taking care of it. And that's what I do, and I'm sure you do that as well. So, especially with your uh, laces and things. I think of Margaret, how she stores her things um, when she makes her projects. I mean, she's amazing. And um, Margaret, when she showed her tour of her room, how she has everything stored to, oh, I wish I was that organized. It's beautiful, beautiful how she stores her laces and vintage things. So thank you for showing that, Margaret. You're an inspiration, my friend. Uh, she lives not too far from me, actually, and we've become friends, and I sure appreciate her and her beautiful lace work. So here we go. I'm uh, putting on this. Now, I wanted to have something that was not so soft. So go to your twine. If you're doing tone on tone beige, grab your natural twi linen twine. Make a bunch of, you know, knots or bow, if you want to call it. And then if you have a little uh, wooden piece, those wooden pieces of hearts I got at the dollar store when nothing's a dollar, they were all separated, all these hearts. Oh, yes. I couldn't believe they were like a dollar and a quarter for all of these different beautiful out of balsam wood so it was nice and lightweight and it was, oh I'm grabbing one of those envelopes I made from my last tutorial no when you're doing tone on tone don't bulk it with color then I had that gold die cut of that flower in the left hand now it's gold I don't have gold on there so it's going to be a shadow it's going to be a gold die cut shadow and I'll show you what I mean by that. You don't want to have direct gold if you're not using all gold. See how that your eye just goes to that and you lose sight of the in intricacy of your laces. And I love to feel those laces, you know, and just look at the patterns in them that somebody sat, you know. Um, oh, it just is wonderful. So, and then another good thing um, uh, oh, this is that die cut that looks like I have, um, frills, but it's paper. Yeah, it die cuts as frills, so I put that to the side, so it looks like lace, but it's paper. We need to add paper and cardboard and stuff to our cards. This isn't a complete lace album. It's, it's a card. And then when you do your bows, make sure that you, uh, glue gun them in humps, like, you know, it, like waves. Um, like it looks much better than laying flat. So I wanted to share that with you because I see it right there in my uh, bow. So I glue it here and then I lift it up and glue it again so it's in waves up, down, up, down, valley and uh, not valley. <laughs> I'm trying to talk craft talk. Your valleys and your mountain tops. Yes. See how I'm lifting it up and then I'm glue gunning it because I, I, I want to showcase that that beautiful chipboard. I mean, that's why it's there. I don't want to cover it up with my ribbon, so I kind of, I had a little bit. So we need to cover up that gold. We're going to work on that. Then I had this, I think it's an MFT die I have right here with the leaves around it. I made it two high, two or three high with glue. I think it's two. And then I'm going to showcase a piece of applique that I got off of a wedding dress. 
instead of having a shaker. I'm going to put acetate on it. I'm going to find a place for that feather, my friends, because I want to run that theme from the front page into the inside of my uh, creation here, my four-sided creation. So I make this nice and thick, this die cut right here. And I like it because it has leaves and uh, you have the roses on the front. And so I'm going to grab a piece of acetate and I'm going to cut around it. So I don't want to have any overhang. So I'm going to just nicely take my time and die cut that. And my friends, there's that little piece of applique. Oh, it's a flower with beadwork. Beautiful. Then I'm going to take my thin, oh, you're going to glue the acetate down to the back, right? And that's all you need to worry about right now. Have a piece of acetate because we need to put our double-sided strips on. And I use the really thin Dury strips. They work beautifully. Get a baby wipe so you can take all the glue out from if it oozes into your pattern. And then uh, put your Dury strips on too high. You want to raise it up because you're showcasing that round flower with all of those pearls. And those pearls were looks like it was done by hand. It's gorgeous. And I want to showcase that behind this oval. And then I had, I was looking for this forever. It's garland from Michaels in the wedding section. I love this beaded garland. I just cut a bunch off and then I twist the end so I don't lose it. It's got the glass little, um, looks like little bells. It's so sweet. And I want to put that on there. It's silver. It's not going to take anything away from the white on white. You, you, It wouldn't look good on the tone on tone there. Oh, I put a pearl in there, but I take it out. I take it out because I'm going to put a beautiful piece of applique in there. I'll show you what I do. But first, we need to situate this garland. Yes, it could go there, but I'm folding my card. I don't want anything anything that would be, you know, obstruct that section of my card. So I have to move it over to the right. Now these beautiful, fine Dury strips, we're going to make it too high. Take the paper off of your strips. They will fold beautifully. They'll curve beautifully if the paper's off. Much harder to work on if the paper is on the strips. So remove your paper and then twist and turn the way you need your strips to go on your die piece. Then I put another one on there and I always go back to where the cut is and cover the cut. I don't put it right at the cut. Do you see that? Watch, I'm looking right over top of where that cut ended with the second piece. So crazy easy, isn't it? Now I need to grab it, put some glue on there, and glue her down. Just glue it down over top of that piece I want to showcase. It's just like it is a window box, my friends. Just like the other card where I had the window box. This is like the window box. I have a wedding uh, card that is beautiful. It has the bride and the groom in a shadow box and it's a card I made for my daughter-in-law. She was going to a wedding and she wanted something over the top. I will leave that link. It's long but it is one of the most beautiful wedding cards I have made and so I'd love for you to view it if you have to make a wedding card and this is beautiful. Either side of this card would be wonderful for the front of a wedding card I think and then you can put your sentiment anywhere. I love the wire. It's so soft. The wire holding these little, um, I don't know, glass beads. And I just take the hot glue gun and set them down on top of the lace. You don't need these 6,000. It held it beautifully. I couldn't get it off when I tried to lift it with my fingers. So it's just beautifully gorgeous, my friends. And uh, this is why the tutorial is so long, right? I didn't want to speed up everything too much. I did want to speed it up, and of course it is. You'd be here all day. But look at that round beaded work underneath the acetate on the bottom of that oval. Oh, I'm telling you, I loved creating this. Thank you, Janet, for really putting me to the test to make some more vintage cards. 
I am having a blast with this uh, vintage thing. This is where I began. This, this is kind of like my heritage. I love vintage shabby chic. And I started out creating my cards that way. And yeah, so I was thrilled to get going. And it uses up my stash too. Ooh, yeah. Let's do that. Not yeah. It's yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. So there you have a close-up. Nice close-up. And see this. I was going to use this as a tuck space, but I couldn't cover that beautiful doily. So I was going to do that. But that you can see that is off the wall. That would not go. So in this oval piece, there's intricate lace. And I cut it out of that piece. I couldn't believe I did, but I had more of them. So it wasn't that painful. Now you want to add glue under anything sticky. I didn't put the glue down here because I may want to, I may have wanted to move it. So I didn't glue it down in front of you, but I did later. This is diamonds and pearls. I use the diamonds because I have that beautiful um, uh, piece on the right there that has the silver wire and the wire is very intricate and light. So the diamonds didn't offset it. It wasn't screaming as far as putting it in the middle of the card, right? Where I scored it the half inch. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna get pearls right now and I need to go around the white on white with pearls because white on white with pearls is beautiful. I have a small version. I have a, a larger one here uh, from Recollections. I, you know, I used to always throw a pack in my cart, even if I didn't need them. That way you didn't, uh, it, it wasn't, you know, you're not going in there to get 40 packs and spend, you know, too much money. Just, I used to just slide it into the cart every time I went to get something big or small. And then I put it in my sash. So I thought, why am I going to do one pearl at a time when I have these rolls of pearl and I have the opal pearls in the roll. Remember I got that at right there at a thrift store, the one with the silver middle, that heavy, this is thrift store and it's mother of pearl and I'm going to put it right there. Oh yes, I took the other one off and this beautiful mother of pearl line of pearls is going right around there and I did it with the uh, glue. Yes, I'm just going to make it longer because I didn't have enough there. And if if you're worried, my cameo's dry. Yes, I had a panic attack if it was wet. And I'm working with that cameo wet. Oh, I've done it, but not here today. It was dry. Then I'm going to use the beautiful um, art glitter glue because that dries and uh, works well. But I'm going to tell you what I do. And if you watch my tutorials, you know this. When I use our glitter glue, and I even if I use my hot glue, I put glossy accents over the top. I have a detailed bottle, and in this case, I have a, a bottle of the crystal lacquer, the 3D crystal lacquer, and that is from Heartfelt Creations. It's a little more liquid. Glossy accents, that's what I was trying to tell you. It's a little more liquidy than the glossy accents. But I put it directly over top of the pearls so that it oozes down and secures my poor pearls, my poils. Because, it, you know, you can't trust just glue either all the time. But you can trust glue and glossy accents or liquid lacquer or Arlene's clear glue works well for um, that as, you know, as the Versamark. No, I keep saying Versamark. You see how I'm going over the top and they're oozing down in and it's going to stay. And that's my glossy accents, of course. And then there's my little screwdriver. It's like a little bucket. It picks up my glue quickly. The My pokey tool would have taken all day, but this little screwdriver, it's doing the job. And I thank you. Thank you, hubby, for doing that for me, giving me that for my stash. I love it. It has just enough room to pick up that glue, and I I like it a lot. And then if anything breaks down, I can use it as a screwdriver, like I did on my last card, right? There you have a close-up. Beautiful, isn't it? That die that looks like it's uh, lace, waves, you know. 
on the edge and then make sure you put your heat tool on it right away because if by happenstance you shut your card you want it to be dry so I take the time to use my heat tool and dry it all up and then I don't worry if I accidentally close my card before I finish the design and we're getting down there my friends we really are I want a little soft feather in the corner to separate yes to cover up right there and so I cut it in thirds I'm gonna place it there my voice is hanging on I can't believe it and then I found in a bag see the pearl that I used that looks like a leaf in the lower right I had a whole bunch of those uh, on, on a wire just looked like leaves like that so I grabbed one of them and I used it as a leaf right underneath that cluster in the right hand corner and I tore that off of something or other and I think I got about 75 of those uh, oval rings on a piece of wire I got quite a few in my freezer zipped up bag right there here's a close-up you're getting there to showcase that beautiful little applique you have your bow. Oh, I put another piece of vintage lace up beside the bow. Now let's cover up that gold. We don't want that gold showing. There's nothing gold there. Uh, so you're going to, yeah, see the pearls kind of match. Everything on the right and the left coincide one with another. They just uh, seem to be friends. They're very friendly. Tone on tone is very friendly with the beige and then the white. It won't, uh, you know, it won't offset. Now, this I wanted to show you. Don't grab metals. Don't grab metal. Oh, my. You know, there's a place for that, but not on tone on tone. Get rid of your metals. It uh, doesn't work. Go to your cardboard uh, before your metals, if you're going with light laces, because the metal does something, and the eye, it doesn't seem to be as pleasing to me. You might like it, and you go right ahead. But when I'm doing soft things, I grab the skeletal leaves. I put three of them out uh, where the gold flower is there. And then I thought I was going to put diamonds. And I mean, I went to the trouble of gluing these on. And as quick as I glued them on, I took it off. No, 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 no. That does not look good. Does not look good. Get it off, Carol. Oh, it's terrible. It, it, yeah, I can't believe I put that on there. But, I, you know, you have to practice. And I'm, I'm going, no, no, let's go. Let's get it off there. And I try working with it. And it's not because it wasn't going on right. It's because it did not go. Pearls and diamonds in a small space like this, it didn't work for me today. It, it wasn't the thing to do. So even though I was working with it and I could have made it work, I got it off. And I put, not the mother... A pearl uh, beads you know the line of beads on the top uh, portion of that uh, oval I ended up putting plain pearls tiny tiny little plain pearls so that the inside of that um, acetate showcase that showcasing that little applique it did not um, tear the eye because look at the eye goes right to the diamonds it's just like whoa bling 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 no 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 you want that soft you want that soft so I took it off there we go right off there gone yep that's what you do you do not want to do that and it even looks pretty to leave it but because I had glue on it I had to do something so into my stash I had these teensy teensy tiny little pearls that were from the dollar store where nothing's a dollar on, um, I don't know, I think it was six or eight across. You just cut it off. Yeah, it was giving me a little bit of trouble here, but I got them on there and then I put the uh, glossy accents, or in my case, the crystal lacquer, over top to be double security. So you have the, you're gluing it down with a nice glue then over top of your pearls, just pour out your glossy accents or crystal lacquer or Arlene's clear glue. It all works the same as glossy accents. And there you have it. Isn't that better? You get the teensy-weensy little pearl look because pearls are inside there, Carol. 
Yeah, here it comes. Yep, let it just ooze out and stick those pearls. And it dries clear. It dries clear. It looks like it's very thick there, my friends, but it, it isn't. It just smooths itself down and out. Scoop, get your little screwdriver, my friends. Find your, I'm sure you have one of these around the house. And yeah, scoop that all out. And in a few hours, this dries clear. You can see your little fine beads beautifully. It doesn't look this thick and oozy. It looks beautiful. So that's how I stick my pearls for sure. That'll, you know, and then of course, be very careful with acetate. If you're trying to heat set something with the acetate there, take it away, put it on, take it away, put it on, or you're going to melt your acetate and then you're going to start over. So there's the little piece that I cut out of that big piece. Uh, and look at the bottom, how this was perfect. That was out of that oval cluster I was going to use on the right hand side here. So I grabbed my pearl, I took it off. You're still going to see the gold, but it's not going to be that evident. It, uh, you know, it's not going to be that in your face. It's going to be soft. The beadwork is going to show. The beautiful lace is going to show. Then I found the top portion. I didn't want to throw anything out, so I used the top portion for the corner piece. So that was um, wonderful. You got to use that one little applique had a lot of, uh, and I'm just showing you that you can see the gold and uh, everything is fine and pretty. And the glue gun is helping this stay secure. I have to push it up into there. Just hang on, get yeah, get your screwdriver there. Push it under there. Yes, make it work, Carol, make it work. And there you have it, my friends. Isn't it pretty? All beautiful laces, soft and pretty, just like paper. You know, you can uh, use paper and you can use your laces together. I think they just uh, say something. There you go. It says beautiful to me. There's the cameo, the pearls, the acetate, all of that together, my friends. Now, I didn't turn my camera on when I did the back page. I apologize. I looked up when it was more than three quarters of the way done and the red light wasn't on and there's nothing I could have done about it you know, but cry. That was the only thing. And I didn't want to do that either. I just thought, Carol, you know, next time you better read that little sign you have in front of you that says to make sure light is on. Yeah, but I didn't. Isn't that pretty? There's the front. I so love it. I hope you enjoyed the pictures later on. And then I'm going to showcase the back. I'll just show it. Oh yeah, sorry. I grabbed that roll of the really tiny pearls and I put them at the middle of the butterfly in the body right there so I kept two strands side by side to put there and then I put one strand down the butter the half butterfly there of his body right there and how pretty is that I think it's beauteous so you have the pearl thing going on in the front as well look at that just gorgeous and who'd know that's toilet paper flowers? Nobody, my friends. They're not going to get this card and say, Oh, look, she has toilet paper for flowers. No, that's not going to happen. It's just going to be beautiful. So here's the back. I did start it for you. I put one layer going down like that, of the right there with the birds. I put that there. And then I put, no, I put another layer that was smaller and you're going to see that. I'm going to showcase that. But I have to make a pin, a hat pin for this. So there's the front. Let's just showcase the front really quickly here. My lights are getting in the way of the acetate over the lady, but there's the second page. Now, see that, that cameo down there? I took that out. I took that out just so you know. I didn't glue it down in there. It kind of just set like a pocket in there. I wanted to see if I liked it. I didn't. It's metal. 
it metal just doesn't go. And here's the back, easy peasy. I put the book, I put this double strand of pearls and separated them down the uh, bookmark. I have the pages here, some filigree going up the side. I put some cheesecloth in the corner and then we're going to work. Look at this bead. That is like sand gold inside that bead. You have the white cream and then that marbled gold going all through it. And I'm telling you, it looks like liquid gold. What a beautiful piece of glass uh, work that is. And I know it's probably from my friend Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. So I knew I wanted to have a hat pin on the front. I wanted it to be over on my focal point on the left hand side so I grabbed some of my goodies that are obviously in my jewelry section of my craft room and we did um, let me hone in there so you take the glass off you're going to put a small bead at the top it's a round cupped uh, it's almost like one of those butter cups right there it's soft so I put that up there first, then I took my fingers and I pressed it in. So it held it there. You're going to use a e, little bit of E6000 with your pokey tool. Put it inside there so it stays. Then I am looking for, um, yeah, what am I looking for there? A uh, glass, uh, oh, I wanted to use these gold, beautiful diamond rings. They're tiny. They come in two different um thicknesses. There's really, really small ones and then the next size up. So I use the really small ones and put them as, you know, my separators. So there you have it. I am just looking around for what I'm going to use and I thought, okay, two of those round with the diamonds in it. Then you're going to go pearls. Of course, it's going on with pearls. There's the pearl cluster. Two more diamond pieces pearl cluster, two more diamond pieces right there, and then I'm going to twist. I make sure I do three of them so that there's three. It's an odd number. And then I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to twist it up on the bottom, add my E6000 on the bottom so that it's nice and tight. You don't want those uh, beads flipping around so that it's nice and tight. I haven't made jewelry forever. It was nice getting it out. Some of it out anyway. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I had so much uh, things around me. It was crazy. But here we go. You can see I'm trying to find... Um, I was going to make matching earrings. That's what I was doing there. Then I thought of putting an earring backing on there. So if somebody wanted to reuse these, then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't look appealing. So I just grabbed a tool. Then I found my cameos in here. And I thought this end one um, matched, but it's too orange. You can see that when I put it there. It, it's too orange. I had to take it off because the flowers right next to it were pink, like a pinky coral. And it just took away from it. But, you know, it could have worked uh, somewhere else, I suppose. Maybe my next card. I don't know. But there you have it, my friends, the diamonds, the pearls, the liquid gold running through that top glass piece. Absolutely stunning. I love that glass bead on the top with the liquid gold running through it. I really do love the pearls, love the diamond rings, two each, all that glitter, all that glitter. And you have yourself a gorgeous hat pin. And I'm going to glue gun it right there. There's where I put it. Doesn't that look gorgeous with my toilet paper roses? Oh, yes. I loved it. It looked like her hand was hanging on to it. Oh, yes, I fell in love. So now that I'm happy where I'm going to put it, I'm going to make sure that my glue is clean. Always clean your glue. Take a piece of paper, and if it's been sitting there for some time, it will burn inside your glue gun. So squeeze some out, and then when it gets to being clear again, then start your work and you know you're going to have nice clear glue. And then I moved it and put E6000 behind it as well. And there you have it, my friends. So I slowed the camera down for you so that you could see all of the goodness of a beautiful vintage 
card. Toilet paper flowers, die cuts, um, filigree. You've got that beautiful hat pin with your diamonds, your pearls, your liquid gold running through that top glass bead. So pretty. And butter, excuse me, butterflies. I just thought I was going to cough again. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been struggling with this now for at least a week. Um, but anyway, my voice is back. And uh, butterflies and gorgeousness of uh, laces. There's the tone on tone. Not overdone, is it? There's no bulk to this. You have your skeletal leaves. You have your gold intricate die cut flower and laces. And then I stuck that down in there because I wanted to see, you know, if it really did offset it. And it did. I took it out. That is not going to be in there. And my friends, these are going to get put off to the side for my 20,000 subscriber giveaway when that happens. And um, if it happens, they're going to be there in, um, you know, in my stash waiting to get mailed out. So here you have it. Look at that beautiful gold, or I'm sorry, diamond glitter. Oh, showcasing that cameo which I love and then the acetate that's my lights that acetate isn't crinkle looking like that it's just my lights is giving that illusion it's showing showcasing that beautiful center of the applique you have a little bit of diamonds on the spine I left the spine on the outside clean I didn't want to put anything on that. There is the cheesecloth with some vintage photo. Because it wraps around to the front, which was brown, I did that. And here you have the split. I cut it. So I cut the pearls so that they went to each side. You have a little vintage book uh, here with the Le Francais writing. I did a Grogain white ribbon. It, it was fuller. It wasn't as... Um, you know, satiny looking. It was that nice grogain. I wanted it to have some substance like the front of the card. Those are the things I think of when I do vintage. I think of the textures. Uh, let's put that down. I didn't have enough glue. That feather I, I came into play and that's when I thought I need to get some E6000 on there. So I ran some E6000 behind that glass. I knew it needed that. So I'm just looking for it here. We'll place it underneath. And the middle pearl will get some E6000. Uh, you can see the spine I left clean on the outside of this. And I had so much fun, my friends. Thank you, Janet, for encouraging me to make some vintage cards. And these will go in to my stash with all the giveaways I have ready to go. Uh, have yourselves a blessed week, my friends. Take care of uh, yourself and... Uh, like always, I so enjoy your company. Thank you for joining me in my craft room. You mean the world to me as, as creative friends. You truly do, and I appreciate your comments. At the end of the video, you'll see my head up in the left-hand corner. If you press that, you'll subscribe automatically. Just press my head, and you're subscribed. And there you have it. There, enjoy the pictures. I so look forward to seeing you on the next project. Take care, everybody.